Uh, yeah. Ec exciting to be back out here. You know, we have 26 new players, so there's a lot of information to try to present and allow them to grasp. It's been, it's been exciting. Uh, clearly, the acquisition of the junior college players and getting some of those guys through the draft was very helpful. And the, the transfers, it adds a little bit of maturity, some experience. Um, you try to create some depth. I, I've liked the variety that I've seen on the mound. We've got a good group of left-handed pitchers with different types of stuff. Uh, plenty of righties. You, you have some octane in there. You have some pitchability. And you have some good secondary pitches. The depth we have on the field is going to be very helpful. I think it's very competitive to try to find a spot on that field to, to play, which you would like. Uh, the more talented players you have on that field at practice every day, it just it ups the level of play and competitiveness and what you have to compete against. And I think that's the mark of a good team. And I do, I do see that. Uh, we have obviously far more depth behind the plate this year, which is, which is helpful, that, that position. We saw Colton gave us everything he had. He got banged up a little bit, but answered the bell. We have depth there. I really do like the depth we have on the mound. And if we can get some of these Octane guys to harness their stuff, I, I think it'll be a very fun pitching staff to manage. The addition of the lab in the cage area, to have a dedicated track man system that's permanently fixed, hanging from that roof, so helpful. The Edutronic camera and the TV that's mounted, you get pitch by pitch analysis and grip and super high def slow-mo of everything that's thrown when Micah feels like it's the right time to have them in that setting. I think it's a great addition and it just is gonna help moving those guys along in their development, which is one of the reasons they're here. The other is to win. So uh, I like where we are. It's still very early in the fall. We'll get into our two games a little bit later in the fall and that's exciting. These guys at some point uh, playing each other every couple days gets old. So Mercer and then at the University of Alabama, Mercer will be here and then traveling to Tuscaloosa to play. Those will be good tests against really good teams. So that's kind of the tail end of the fall, the back end of October. But th this has been enjoyable and uh, there's noticeable talent on the field. It's good. I know coaches don't like comparing teams versus previous teams, but I mean, with the new coaching staff, with so many new players, can you, how, how different are things? How far along are you now versus last year? Well, you have some guys that have been through this. So the things we just talked about in that room, we try to meet for 10 to 15 minutes a day on chalk talk on what we're gonna do at practice. You have some guys that understand that and you hear them helping the new players acclimate to what we're doing just so that we're on the same page. Last year, it was only the group of coaches that really knew what we were trying to do when you walk out for practice. So that's great. You know, the new coaches, I, I coach Ty, I've known Ty, I've coached with Ty for a long time, and I've known Micah for a long time. Our acclimation to the system was fairly easy. It's now the young guys, with. Clearly they're the most important, but their adaptation to what we're doing and having a group of older guys, and in some cases in really key spots on the field that are back, everything flows a little bit easier for you in terms of presenting information. You mentioned depth in the field, but specifically like the depth of power that you guys have built, just how much comfort does that give you with the offense? It's been pretty dynamic, Brett. Um, you know, you have a variety of lefties and righties. We've added a little bit of each of that. You know, you've got a switch hitter in play in the middle that'll create some depth with Faro. You've got left-handed bat behind the plate, and left-handed bat option at first base. I, I like it. And the guys that have been through a full season or two, and those guys have gone off and swung the wood bat in the summer leagues, which teaches you some valuable barrel control lessons. I really like what I see offensively. I, I do want our base running in our short game to be more prevalent because the extra base hit and, and clearly standing in there and being able to manage the at-bat is one part of it, but there are other pieces to the game. And as we see with the caliber of pitching that you face essentially every day at this level, you have to be able to produce and be creative in maybe other parts of the game via a stolen base, an occasional bunt, taking the extra base, the dirt ball read. So the offense in the batter's box noticeably 
more potent, but it's then the finer points of the game that we have to clearly continue to hone and develop. Hot start for you guys last year. I mean, I'm sure when you walked out of Fort Worth, you felt really good about the trajectory of what last season could be. Was it surreal at times last year? How did you comport last year into doing what you're doing now? It was tough. I remember standing down in the right field when Wyatt, after his start, I think it was against Pittsburgh, and he was sore. And, you know, when he walked out of there and didn't feel right, I, I recognized the magnitude of that one individual and what that created in terms of the pitching staff, whether we had started him, relieved him, um, we were trying to sort through what worked best. And you have so many young guys in those other roles, uh, his injury hurt. I think if we had Wyatt throughout the, the long haul of that season, it's a little bit different. Um, we, were, we were short in some areas, and I, I hope adding some of the age and some of the junior college pitchers and players and some of the transfer players injects some maturity and uh, talent into the equation. And that's a huge part of college athletics. You can look across the board, the recruitment and the talent acquisition is so important. And coming off that season, I mean, that was clearly something we knew we had to engage in like all summer. And I'm happy with how that played out. And it's unfortunate with Wyatt and how the season went. And I, I feel for Wyatt, he's gonna be back in town and he's gonna be here to train a little bit and try to get himself back. But that was a key piece. And without that key piece, uh, you know, we were a little shorthanded at times on the mound and it hurt. You mentioned the transfer portal. You know, how does that change the game? And like you mentioned, allowed you to rebuild the roster after a season that didn't go the way you wanted it. All right. Well, it's an integral part of college athletics. Whether we like the portal or not, the portal is real and we have to manage that and hopefully we did now you have to get the right pieces because you know you only have so many spots and you have to spread the acquisitions through the portal into the right positions on the team um, or else you're not really you're creating log jams more than you're creating depth and i think we did that and uh, people obviously enjoy the thought of playing in Dick Hauser Stadium in front of our fans in the ACC on the national stage. So we have a lot of things that are going for us in terms of pulling players out of the portal. And it went well. And I think when you look out there as you watch this develop, you're going to see the injection of those guys and it's going to be very noticeable. Because I know that baseball, compared to football or basketball, it's not like you go to the last year to you for high school commitments. You kind of commit early and then, you know, kind of stick to it more often. So does the portal, like, as a new staff, become a little more important to fill out the roster as well? Huge. Huge. Um, and the draft, part of the thing we battle in baseball that the other sports really don't is those guys that you sign in November, they may never make it to your campus. So you have to, you have to try to cover some of the things that you lose with your signing class and then also with some of the guys on the team that, that signed late, like Doug Kirkland was a free agent that had a chance to sign, and he did. And this time last year, uh, you may not have predicted that that would happen, but it did. So you have to try to cover yourself and, again, put the right pieces into the puzzle so that the puzzle works and you fit and you're not stacking the same piece over and over again. And I think and hope that that's what we did with our acquisition through the portal. You talked about the, the pitching staff, and obviously you think you knew kind of things were have to go right last year. Like you talked about being able to identify the problem from when Wyatt went down, a potential problem. I guess how, how much different, I know they haven't really ramped up yet, that'll happen more in, in fall, but just the depth of that staff with what you did through the portal with who you retained coming into at this point in the offseason. That's great. Like to, to think about the variety of arms and the number of arms we have, that's huge. And then as the season starts to roll, there's going to be guys that emerge in starting roles and relief roles, and, and the innings are probably acquired by 10, 12 guys. Uh, what roles those will be, I have no idea. Who will it be, I don't know. I do know that we have some good options. We have left-handed options. We have some guys that have some, some horsepower. So the variety is noticeable. You know, Noah Short, side armor that was at West Virginia that we were able to acquire. That's a good piece, totally different look from down here. So you, I could go on and on about the variety, and I think you guys will see it as you begin to, to follow us, you know, end of the fall and into the preseason. There's some neat things that are available to us on, on our pitching staff, and that depth and variety, it's probably the most key component to a good team is quality depth and quality stuff on the mound.
you talked about the, the pitching lab, and I know that's something Wake Forest got a lot of attention for last season with how they built their staff. Is that just is that something that's become kind of the norm in in college baseball? And I guess yeah. is it how is it most valuable? Is it when someone maybe a pitch isn't working like you someone expects it to, or what is its biggest value? Well, that technology has been around for a period of years, not ten. But in the last four or five years, that technology has existed. What we were able to do is make it a little bit more permanent where it's in that cage. And we divided one of the cages in half, in essence, as we pulled the pitching lab area cage down. Um, but there's so much information hidden in the modern day metrics of the spin, the vertical approach angle, um, the release height, the extension. And then when you start to to pull the super slow-mo imagery down of what this thing looks like coming out of somebody's hand. If you're working on a change-up, what is the last piece of their hand or fingers to touch the ball and how does that affect its flight or its tilt? It's amazing. So being able to look at that, uh, man, you can't put a price tag on it. And taking it then out onto the field in competition is ultimately where this has to go. But you you be hard pressed to pull any sort of information of that magnitude out of um, you know your basic cameras and the things that we were accustomed to in the game for so long like this is the track man that's in the stadium is now in that lab so everything speaks the same language here and it's under the roof so any weather non-factor in terms of rain or whatever so it's really a neat space. Using it properly, and you know, it's, it's not the only pitching development area that we have, but now that we do have it, uh, it's just so fascinating to see the, the details that you can pull out of that information. Is it used, are you able to use that to like simulate other pitchers, top pitchers around the nation as well, or is that possible? Uh, not, not really. You, you would use your virtual reality stuff for that to like really see the images of the pitching. So from an offensive standpoint, the pitching lab, the way we have it is, is it's for the pitchers, you know, and, and the catchers to develop. And it's really neat. And you guys should really, you should go down and take a look at that. Uh, I think there's a couple guys that are getting in there later. It's really neat. Now from the offensive side, I think just the, the pure camera systems that we have now. And I think the advancement of the pitching machines which can simulate the stuff and the intricacy with which you can set the machine to simulate the stuff is probably the offensive equivalent to the lab and there are technological pieces that you can do to analyze the swing but I think the variance in what you deal with hitting with change of speed uh, the movement different pitches it's a little bit different than the synchronized choreography of a pitching delivery. The, the three freshmen left-handers that sustained injuries in their senior year of high school. Just what does the timetable look on this? Manka doesn't look like he'll factor in this year, and um, Lauk and Rowan will. Now, not right now. So we're not going to see them really pitch this fall. But it's within the timetable for them to be able to compete for us. And, you know, they're strictly in a rehab mode, so that's okay. Like, they'll just have to ease on back through it and stay on their timeline to get back. But I think as it stands now, when we get back in January, which is, is a long time, they're really normal, normal arms. Cam, uh, Cam, it seems like you went through kind of the ups and downs you'd expect from a freshman last year, but really figured some things out down the stretch and carried that over into the, the Cape. I guess how excited are you for how far he's come in the year now? Coming into year two. I'm excited every day I get to come out here with Cam. He's just such a sincere worker. Like everything he does, he works at it. Um, the, the focus on the right parts of his work is very good. What he did in the Cape uh, I, didn't surprise me. Like he, he has that kind of capability. Um, I think going through what he went through and if not the most difficult, one of the most difficult schedules and being thrown in there without a whole lot of protection around him, uh, he learned and some of those learning moments were, were difficult. But you have to grow and learn as a player and he clearly did that. And just watching him simplify the at bat and the swing, things we worked on throughout the course of the year, but when you're gone and you're in the cape and you're facing good arms again, you have to carry the things you're working on into that setting to move the needle and he clearly did. Overall, you wanted those guys to go up and, and get a lot of at-bats this summer. And 
think a lot, bunch of them played like 40 plus games. Just how overall, how pleased were you just with the amount of games they played and how they played? I love it. I love it. The training is so important, but the playing of the game at that level you can't duplicate that in training. To have to manage at bats and run the bases and play defense at a high level, like th those are things, as much as we would like maybe the individualized training you can do in the summer, to go play and swing the wood bat and compete against that type of competition for 40 games, so valuable. Probably the best thing that any player could do, and those guys went and did it, and I'm proud of them.